Happy you could come along. We are joined, as always, by Greg Angert, beer director for the Neighborhood Restaurant Group, a James Beard Award nominee, the group including GBD in DuPont Circle, also Red Apron, two locations, Union Market and in Merrifield, Virginia. Greg, it is always good to see you. Good to see you too, Brian. Oh, I wish the show was starting again. What is, <laughs> it's kind of unfair. What, what, it is unfair. Uh, what smart. Is, what is on tap this week? This is the next Game of Thrones beer uh, uh, from Omegon. Um, and actually, to that point, though, isn't it? It's interesting. So, you know, we, we talked about the first one, and I couldn't resist doing the second one. The first one was called Throne Blonde. Um, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, sold out nice immediately. Uh, but that was, that was released at the beginning of the third season. So that seemed kind of appropriate. And in some ways, this is unfair because we have to wait for the fourth season to come out with Take the Black, which is the second iteration, but also the capitalizing on it. I mean, if you're a Game of Thrones fan and you see this on the shelves and you're starving for the show, you're going to buy it. And it's a great brewery, too. It's from an awesome brewery. So it's a a pretty cool collaboration. Uh, Take the Black is the name of this one. Um, It's an homage to uh, The Night's Watch, uh, for those of you who watch the show, uh, who protect Westeros. And even uh, when you look at the label, it shows the tree um, by, uh, by which um, Jon Snow took his oath to the Night's Watch. So this one is uh, fittingly dark. It's a 7% stout, um, Belgian kind of stout, so not too roast, and, too roast heavy, not too intense. And what I love is like, you know, I, you know uh, Game of Thrones is, is, is a fantasy show, but it obviously is taking its cue from uh, kind of late Middle Age yeah. England. Um, I think it's supposed to be around the... The, the 16th century or so, or so uh, from there. But, um, and so for this beer, they incorporated some kind of old school herbs into the beer uh, for uh-huh. seasoning, like they would have in the old days, like we've talked about, you know, rather than hops. This has hops as well, but also it's seasoned with star anise, um, a classic uh-huh. um, cooking spice uh, from China, actually found in a uh, Chinese uh, five spice blend. It's found in Chinese food a lot. Gives it a mild bitterness and nice licorice quality, anise quality. Uh, but then also licorice root, which is an herb that's a little bit sweeter. So you get a balance there. And as I know Omegang well, this is uh, all integrated. It's not going to overwhelm and shouldn't just taste like licorice, which can be a kind of polarizing flavor. <laughs> yeah. Mm. A little bit of the Belgian kind of brightness from the fermentation. Ooh, Yeah. And you don't. You have to. Uh, on and no on no and one on. should be put off by the thought of the licorice taste because no. it's not. It's not really there. I mean, you can if. Yeah, but it's there. But like, if, it's one of those <laughs> I'm not things. Not making any that's, sense. But no. But that's the beauty of seasoning, and spicing food and and beer. It's like. It should be something that you can't. You wouldn't pick it out automatically, or else that's overly done, and and can turn some people off who don't like licorice. But at the same time, were I to tell you it's in there. You should be able to find it. Yeah. I think that's kind yeah. of the, the great test is like it should be there but not there at the same time. It, and the finish is different, and I, it's good. I like it, and I'm trying to come up with the right word, and it, it, chalky is, is, is the word that comes to my mind, but that might put some people off. No, it it's, 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 what it has is actually it's more of um, um, almost has like a, a slightly bitter liqueur quality to it. You know, think of like uh, Campari, mm-hmm. uh, Pastis, other kinds of like French liqueurs that are herbed herbal liqueurs. That's what I'm getting right now. It's almost got that kind of like, it's really delicious, complex, earthy, rooty, um, drying bitter, but not hoppy bitter, not roasty bitter. It's definitely that, that anise and that licorice root are coming through all the way in the finish, but working elegantly too with that roasted chocolatey quality of the beer as well. I'm sure you told me this when we did the first Game of Thrones beer a while back. Um, but I must have forgotten. So this is a series they're doing. This is second. Do you know how many more there will be after this? I mean, the, judging by sales, I would imagine there's going to be many more. I mean, it's, it's a really cool idea. Um, I'd be interested. I haven't really done too much research. I haven't talked to too many people about the sellout idea about this. You know, I'd be interested to, to see what people think. You know, I mean, because let's I mean, just being honest, I, don't, I, I have no problem with it at all. No, I mean, but then again. Not if it's a quality product. How exactly. You at the end of the day, really? it doesn't. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, that's, the big, that's the thing. Standpoint. Exactly. It's not like the old days when, or even today, when some uh, larger breweries that don't necessarily make uh, products with any character will change their cans to have the local you know, team on it or something like that. that. Then that seems more like that. You're right. You're, that's my feeling, too. If the liquid's great, the liquid's great. And that's what's happened in two beers in a row. Um, but I do wonder, also, it's, it's a cool show, you know, it's, so, but I wonder uh, what people think. And the, the big thing that's amazing about this is that 
again, it's all about the liquid. And the first beer sold out immediately. So they literally doubled production on this one. Really? Wow. So that's good to know. You'll see it's not going to be as scarce as it was. So definitely go out, try to find it. Um, and, and it's pretty well heavily represented throughout our, our region. You know, like in D.C. at some of the smaller shops um, or the, the non-grocery chains uh, like Rodman's and Chevy Chase Liquors. You'll see it there. You'll see it at all the Whole Foods. See it at Total Wines, uh, Wegmans. So okay. it's going to have a pretty, pretty good representation. And our inv invitation to Peter Dinklage, to one of our favorite uh, actors on that show, our invitation for him to come sit in on Beer of the Week is still open. Yeah. Uh, he didn't respond. He's a busy guy. Uh, he didn't respond a few months ago when we invited him. That would be awesome. Uh, but um, he's uh, welcome to come by. Any cast member, come yeah, by. Anybody at all. Throw yeah. down one here. Or just somebody who's dressed like one of them. Um, <laughs> yeah, the other thing I'll say, be, too, about be this. Be careful what you ask for. Yeah, yeah. But, um, also smart in the style is that this beer will lay down as okay. well. So grab some, drink it now, it's delicious now. Lay some down and then you can have it for the, for the season opener for season four. And how would you expect between now and then, we're talking many months or several months, uh, how, how will the, would the taste evolve, say, so over I think, six months? Yeah, I think what you're gonna find months. is that kind of, uh, some of the more intense bittering qualities um, and the, the, uh, the, the, the root quality there, that kind of um, anise and licorice note is going to hugely mellow. And the malt characters are going to come out. It'll hopefully oxidize nicely, so you'll get a kind of uh, port-like quality. Maybe some more red fruit will pop out. You'll get a lot of toasted raisiny notes. I think this beer will taste awesome. And, you know, corked and caged, it's made to be laid down. Another great thing about this, re-fermented in the bottle, um, it's got a great creaminess to it. Yeah, the carbonation's it fantastic yeah. on it, so it's awesome. What would you pair this with? I guess I can't get my head off the Chinese thing I was talking about before because it is big in that, but um, I'm always looking for... Um, I guess beers that go awesome with like takeout, you know, because sure. I eat a lot. Love it. We eat a you lot. Know? Of and, uh, so this to me is like uh, I could do this with with uh, Chinese takeout. Be awesome. Soy. You think? Imagine like soy flavors with this. Be perfect. Peking duck, duck, anything duck, duck soups, things like that. Um, you find these flavors in the cuisine already, but in milder ways. So this will kind of bring those out, but also complement. Think of like the roasty, almost peppery qualities are going to be great with with. Uh, Kind of Chinese American food. Okay, if you got a question for Greg about beer or Game of Thrones, <laughs> he knows the show. Uh, I'm in the middle of reading the books myself. Um, <laughs> you can send us an email and ask that question. The email is beer of the week at wtop.com. Greg, thank you as thank always. You. Everyone, always do please drink responsibly and be sure to bring your thirst next time for another beer of the week. <laughs>